everyone. Welcome to Yee's Law Journal, where we explore the latest trends and issues in the legal world. I'm Josh, your host, and today we're diving into a truly fascinating topic, AI voice cloning and its legal implications. Joining me is my insightful co-host, Anna. Hi, Josh. Hi, listeners. I'm thrilled to discuss this with you. AI voice cloning is really pushing the boundaries of what's possible and what's legal. Let's jump right in. So, Anna, AI voice cloning, what exactly is it? Great question, Josh. AI voice cloning, sometimes called deep fake audio, uses artificial intelligence to create synthetic speech that sounds like a specific person. There are two main types, text to speech, which converts written text into speech that mimics a person's voice, and voice conversion, which changes one person's voice to sound like another without changing the spoken words. It's both amazing and a bit unsettling, right? A recent high profile case involved actress Scarlett Johansson, OpenAI's new model, ChatGPT 4.0, introduced a voice assistant named Sky that sounds almost exactly like Johansson. Despite OpenAI's claims that the voice was based on another actor, Johansson felt it was an unauthorized use of her voice and demanded its removal. That's a perfect example, Josh. It really highlights the growing concerns over AI's ability to replicate unique and recognizable voices without consent. This technology is impressive, but it raises some serious legal questions. In the United States, the protection of an individual's voice falls under the right of publicity. This right allows individuals to control the commercial use of their identity. However, it's not uniformly legislated across all states. Exactly. For instance, states like New York and California offer protections for voices under this right, whereas others may not. It's quite a patchwork system, which can be challenging for those trying to navigate these laws. One pioneering piece of legislation in this area is Tennessee's Elvis Act. Named to honor the state's rich musical heritage, this act extends the right of publicity to include voice and specifically addresses AI-generated voices. The Elvis Act defines voice as any sound that can be distinctly attributed to a particular individual, whether it is their actual voice or a simulated one created by AI. This is quite comprehensive and aims to protect against unauthorized voice cloning. Indeed, the act imposes liability for unauthorized creation, use, and distribution of AI-generated voices. This includes knowingly using or distributing AI cloned voices without permission, even for non-commercial purposes. And it also regulates the distribution of algorithms designed to create such voices, aiming to protect the original voice owner's rights from the very source of potential misuse. This is a significant step forward in the legal landscape. Turning our attention to China, the legal landscape regarding voice cloning is evolving. While not as specific as the Elvis Act, China has been actively updating its laws to address digital rights and AI technologies. Yes, Josh. Chinese law provides a degree of protection under intellectual property rights and personal rights but there is growing recognition that more explicit regulations are needed to deal with AI voice cloning. Both the US and China are grappling with similar issues, but are approaching solutions differently. The US tends to focus on state level legislation leading to a patchwork of protections, whereas China is likely to adopt a more centralized approach. Both countries recognize the need to balance innovation with protecting individual rights, particularly for public figures whose voices are integral to their personal brand. It's a challenging but necessary balance to strike. As AI continues to advance, the legal frameworks governing its use must evolve accordingly. Protecting individuals' voices from unauthorized cloning is essential to preserving their rights and the value of their personal brand. Whether through legislation like the Elvis Act in Tennessee or new regulations in China, it's clear that the law will play a crucial role in guiding the ethical use of AI technologies. That's all for today's episode of Yee's Law Journal. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, please reach out. Until next time, stay informed and stay engaged.